October 26th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, James chapter 5 from the New Testament. Come now, you rich, weep and cry aloud over the miseries that are coming on you. Your riches have rotted and your clothing has become moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have rusted and their rust will be a witness against you. It will consume your flesh like fire. It is in the last days that you have hoarded treasure. Look, the pay you have held back from the workers who mowed your fields cries out against you, and the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived indulgently and luxuriously on the earth. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person, although he does not resist you. So be patient, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's return. Think of how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the ground and is patient for it until it receives the early and late rains. You will also be patient and strengthen your hearts, for the Lord's return is near. Do not grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge stands before the gates. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers and sisters, take the prophets who spoke in the Lord's name. Think of how we regard as blessed those who have endured. You have heard of Job's endurance, and you have seen the Lord's purpose, that the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. And above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall into judgment. Is anyone among you suffering? He should pray. Is anyone in good spirits? He should sing praises. Is anyone among you ill? He should summon the elders of the church, and they should pray for him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. So confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great effectiveness. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and there was no rain on the land for three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the sky gave rain, and the land sprouted with a harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wonders from the truth and someone turns him back, he should know that the one who turns a sinner back from his wandering path will save that person's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. God, help us to always understand that ultimately you are in charge. Ultimately, it is you, our sovereign Lord, who makes these decisions, who makes the decisions of who will be healed from their sickness, who will retain their sickness, and who will die from their sickness. Understanding that you are in charge of a person's salvation, that you choose us, not that we choose you. God, in all things, we are to submit to you and be obedient to you. We are to pray to you in full faith that we can be healed if that is your will. Not to pray simply because it is our will that we be healed. Same thing with the people around us. It is all in your time that they be saved or sadly in some cases not be saved. God, I just ask that we continue to pray strong prayers of pure faith but not faith in what we want faith in our understanding of who is in control who is in charge and who has created this incredible world our sovereign lord god allow our prayers to you to be humble allow our prayers to be understanding of your power in this world allow our prayers to be filled with faith again not in what we desire but in what we know that you can accomplish. God, thank you for books like James that so clearly spell out all the power of who you are, all the sovereignty that we should be submitting to. God, help us to understand because we get this upside down so often. We pray for things we want instead of praying for your will. 
my prayers as you know have switched so dramatically from a a list of requests even in faith to god if it's your will can this happen god your will be done in this situation god whatever your will is in this situation allow our hearts to be at rest with that allow our hearts to be at peace with whatever you decide god we need to understand And it's so incredibly difficult, but we need to understand you are our world. You are the universe. The world doesn't surround us and we aren't the center of that. Although we so often believe that we are. That if it is your choice to heal someone, that two things will happen. One, that person will be healed. And two, it will be for your glory that they are healed. And we need to understand those two crucial things. If a person is to keep an illness for the rest of their lives or for a certain length of time, the same thing is true. It is for your glory and it's also for the best for that person. And if you decide for that person to die from from that illness, the same thing. It is for your glory and it is for their best in that situation. God, these are truths that are so incredibly difficult for us to submit to. They are truths that are so difficult for us to understand and follow. But God, help guide our hearts and our minds to understanding our obedience to you, our humbleness in the face of a holy God who reigns sovereign over the entire world. A God who I run out of words even trying to describe how big you are because myself, I don't even know how big you are. No one does. God, allow us to stay on that path path of truth and keep working our way to understanding what that looks like to be obedient and put ourselves in a right heart frame of mind to who you really truly are, that you are the God who chose us. I'm not sure why. I know it's because of love, but you are the supreme God who chose us. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Thank you.